My name is uh, John Pierre Ashley. I really involved with uh, the, the, edu uh, the, the education committee with the Shehaji Dino Bank Council. I don't know for how long. I've been five years, I believe. So what I understood from from the curriculum that uh, that uh, the education had undertaken uh, with regard to the the you know curriculum, and as far as I understand that uh, that the, the young kids today have been taught with uh, with uh, mostly on the non in education. For example, uh, the history of Newfoundland, Canada, the world history. But uh, I haven't seen any young people, or particularly with the high school students, being taught, you know, history, you know, culture, you know, values, except the craft and a little bit about uh, Inu reading and writing. And that's all, that's all I understand. But there are other activities like uh, uh, experiential learning, but I'm not sure if that's been taught as well, but the only thing that, they, they, uh, that I have heard uh, being taught outside, you know, just fishing, doing activities and stuff like that. But in in reality, it's not it's not been taught in school that uh, that I think that uh, the you know education should have taught because that uh, we have a rich uh, history that we have been here for thousands of years and none of that has been taught in, in this school and what I understood that it, it's all confusing for all uh, young people because that they're teaching in one uh, in English world. You know, what I, what I was thinking, I guess that the others also pointed out that we should have, you know, have some kind of equal balance between, you know, uh, curriculum and the non-Inu cultures. So if we have that balance, that it would be very uh, essential for the young, young people to understand in both cultures. But if they don't, you will lose most of the Inu history or in, Inu culture that, that I believe that you can barely see some young Inu kids being talking in Inu, but it's gradually losing their Inu language and they're talking uh, English in, in, in our houses. What, you, what, what is unusual for me to see my young grandchildren or my great grandchildren talking English but they still talk Inu, but they use both languages, but it's gradually losing the, the Inu part. So I think that's, that's a dangerous part or dangerous issue to deal with because if, if, if it's not being taught here, you know, that, uh, that we'll be losing our culture or our values altogether. It seems that that's, that's what we are right now, because that, that the Inu history that we've been gathered over the years, well, actually, that the non-Inu people, like the archaeologists, ling linguists, and the other educational uh, non-Inu consultants who have been working with the Inu people in the past 50, 60 years, that virtually that they're taking over you know what we have it seems that uh, when we like for an example what i'm writing a book and the consultants and the, the non-inu consultants are the ones who are 
telling us, you know, that's what you should do. You should change, uh, you know, we should do editing. But with, I'm a Nino person. I'm a Nino writer. I can speak fluent in English. I can speak for myself. Why would any non-Nino person tell us how to read and write our own language and to do, to teach our own history, you know? And none of those people know who they are. <laughs> I mean, that know about Inu people, to teach Inu people. Like for example, the, the non-Inu consultant came, came over telling us that, uh, or telling me and the others that uh, we'll be teaching the new Dawn Agreement in high school curriculum. But it seems to me that uh, I oppose that because, that, you know, I don't, there are a lot of flaws. It's a shoddy piece of work that has been done by the legal advisors and the other non know consultants who've been working with us in the past 40 years that they are not telling the truth about, about the new Dawn Agreement. And there are about six or seven points that uh, that will be detrimental, will be uh, have a long-term impact on the Eno people, particularly with the, the young people that we we are teaching that you that they teach here. So I think that that, that needs to be pointed out. But again, I, we, me and my my other friend that uh, who, who also with. Uh, uh, and educate one of the uh, advisory, who is one of the advisory committee, feel the same way. But you know that we've been ignored by those people, the non Inu consultants. They're pushing for, for to have a non Inu person teach our children, our young, our, our grandchildren. And I think that's a very difficult. Uh, uh, or unfair, you know, to, to teach uh, young people, particularly without, you know, the real, the real people like us that were qualified to do that. But in in the government policies, in their structures, that we're not qualified because we're not certified. But I think that's that's uh, I. I, I totally uh, disagree with that because that how come they're just ignoring us, you know, what we want to teach, except those non Inu consultants and the others can just come in here and teach our own children how to become non Inu people. So in, another thing that, uh, that uh, what I think about uh, the indigenous education, Perhaps it means you know education, but there's a lot of uh, rich you know history. Like we can we 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 have a, a blackboard. We used to have a blackboard, you know, which is over two hundred and over two hundred thousand square miles. We had biology. Geology, archaeology, uh, uh, you know, all, all of those things that we have learned since in this land since we've been here for thousands of years. In archaeology, that archaeological evidence shows that we've been here for over 10,000 years. Again, that the archaeologists from Newfoundland or from from Canada, from the United States, telling us that there's a big gap between who the Inu people were 10,000 years ago. But our grandfathers told us that the artifacts that they find in the Inu territory over 200 uh, square miles of Inu land, that the, the remnants of Inu people, it, that, that, that's, that, uh, we already knew that from from uh, we didn't know that from from uh, uh, non Inu people. We already knew that before they came here, and now that they're teaching us 
who we are, where we came from, which is, doesn't make sense to me, because that we have our own religion, which has been destroyed by the by the missionaries or the government. That the history shows that they have destroyed all cultures, you know, just to become a non-Inu person, but or a non-Inu person, which it means that. Um, I think that that is the whole plan here in this education to brainwash the young young people to, so that they won't uh, they won't know who they are. And I never understood this curriculum, but actually that uh, that I, I've been involved with it, and I spent 35 years over 35 years in the country. And I teach young people, I teach Inu you know, history, archaeology, and all those things that have been taught by non Inu people. But it seems that my grand, my grandchildren are going with me in the country, and uh, my other sons and daughters knew about the country. They grew up one of them, so that he spoke and can survive in the country and become independent. But over here, that uh, you know, there are about 90% of young people who does not have a proper education, a proper uh, English to speak, and 90% of young people don't speak or don't know their culture. So there's a parallel where there's. I would say about 100% will be, will not know English or Inu culture at all. And that's what is happening right now. So in the question with your the vision of education, I think that uh, to me, that the way, the way I see it, that uh, we're losing our culture and our values. You know, the first time that uh, that the Europeans came. They've been trying hard to push us to become like animals, being taught in cages as what we are right now, like we're in a reserve. The same thing that the Canadian government taught the South African, South African government about apartheid. And that's where it comes from. And it seems that in Canada might be the best country in the world, which is in, in the backyard or in, in the background, that is not a good country. So the only thing that I would like to see is that, like I said, that, uh, that I, don't, I don't see any future with it if, if this is continued to be taught. If we leave the, the Inu curriculum behind, because right now, Look around. You you won't you won't see any young children from K to grade 12 being taught the real Inu history, with, which I just mentioned. So I think that it would be uh, we need we need to review this all together. Same thing as as I keep saying about the New Dawn Agreement. Same thing. That it all leads to. Uh, a long-term impact on, on the Inu people. So I think that we won't have any culture left if all three of us won't be here, but that's, that's how I see it. But I, I'm not trying to make a speech or anything, I just, just how I see it. And I, I grew up in the country and I grew up in the non-Inu world. So in order to leave and to, to uh, leave normal. You have to have a balance between Inu and non-Inu world. And, but it's difficult to do that. But you, you hardly see any Inu young person to be on that balance. But how do you do it? You, you can't block one culture. So I think that's how, that's how, that's how I see it. And I don't have any, any, any more to say, but I can say that I can say more, but I that I will. I appreciate that. Thanks. That's, that's how I see it.